Hello, this video is on narrowband high frequency click trains. So, narrowband high frequency clicks are made by all seven species of porpoise worldwide um, and some of the dolphins in Lagnarhynchus, Cephalorhynchus, and Pontoporia families and in, um, in the dwarf and pygmy sperm whales in Kogia. Um, so let's uh, have a look at um, some data from the Black Sea from Turkey. So you can see in the top panel, it's showing you the species classes, that there are a lot of porpoise detections here. So th this is the Black Sea porpoise. And we will just isolate just that. So the Kerner F classifier tries to put all cetaceans in either NBHF or other cetaceans um, and we can go to the analysis page and analyze file 3 which is an FP3 file um, and it will give us a an average value for all the clicks there so it's taking quite a while to read this Hold your breath. Nearly there. 36.8 million porpoise clicks. So there's the, the frequency distribution, the number of cycles, which is um, the modal value is four. In the other cetacean uh, click train video, we saw dolphins actually from the Atlantic where that value is higher at six. You've got the the clicks per second, the distribution of click rates, which is peaking at about 25. Um, the bandwidth, which is just sort of rather arbitrary figure from the um, the Kerno F classifier, um, uh, which is very low. Okay, so um, we can now zoom in and have a look at some click trains um and what what i'll do is go somewhere where there are a lot so i'll put 400 in here show next screen okay bring down these amplitudes with f6 and in this panel here, we're seeing the train Q class. So we've restricted that to high and moderate quality. So maybe we'll include low there. Um, and we'll include lower species confidence. And we will go to the display page and select color clicks by train number. So this means that where trains overlap, we can see them displayed in, in different colors here. Um, and this top one species class is actually showing us number of cycles. If we go to number of cycles, we, um, we get some additional information. Um, okay, so this is, this is very typical of porpoises that are really close to the uh, the pod. So their amplitude's got these strange steps in it. That's because basically it's clipping. It's reaching the maximum that the um, digitization process can, uh, can handle. Um, and if we go along to somewhere like here where the... Um, Um, the amplitudes are not hitting that maximum. You get these nice rounded profiles to the, the amplitude of the click train. You see that less often with dolphins just because dolphins are louder, so they're kind of maxing out the, the amplitude scale. If the recorder had more digits, uh, more bits available in that amplitude scale, you would see that the dolphin profiles were, were equally smooth. So first thing to realize is these are not 
trains produced by the animal. They're fragments of trains produced by the animal. So this is probably one animal sweeping its beam around the world. Um, and what we quite often see, maybe I will zoom out to say 20 milliseconds, um, is that in these click trains, perhaps this will, you get a kind of periodicity going on here. Let's see if we can find one that's not quite so loud. We can make that easier by filtering out the very loud ones. So mean amplitude maximum, which we say 600. Show next screen. Um, okay, so we've got less of this clipping. And what I'm hoping we'll see is, yeah, so we're kind of getting it here. Is you get this sort of series of humps going on. And the, these humps are actually generated by the tail beat rate of the the porpoise. So um, as the tail beats, the head goes up and down. The sound beam is a narrow beam coming out of the the front of the, the head, the front of the melon. And so it flashes up and down across the pod. So here it's on the center of... The, it's on the hydrophone now, it's above or below, you can't really tell which. And so you can figure out the rate at which the animal is is beating its tail. Um, so there's another thing here which might have caught your attention, is these red lines in there. So let's zoom right in. Um, and what you can see here is that here you've got a multipath cluster like we discussed for the um, the dolphin click trains. You've got a loud path and then a weaker one and then a weaker one. Same again here, same again here. But in all these cases, this last bit of the pathway is really low frequency. And um, this probably is a real uh, feature of the um, clicks produced by the porpoise. So these are black sea porpoises, and we, we hardly see this in Atlantic porpoises, but we do see it in some of those dolphin species that I mentioned that produce narrowband high frequencies. And there may be better examples here that um, that you would find as you look through it, which show a very clear uh, relationship going on um that looks like it's another source of click trains um yes it's kind of something else coming in so maybe that's what we saw before so in order to convince yourself that you were seeing a low frequency component you'd want to see a long series where it came in exactly in time with the uh, the high frequency component okay we can graph these just to do a quick graph okay the the modal frequency is 121 kilohertz it's the same in the raw data as in the um the fp3 data and that's because the sound scape is just dominated by porpoise clicks. There's, there's not much else. But the thing to notice here, if we look at the trains, the, um, the click train detection is using a, a target kilohertz of 120. So this data, um, is really very close to that so the the kernel classifier will be working quite well but if you're looking at one of those other species or a subpopulation which has a higher a general frequency you may be able to improve the um, species uh, classification by making this target kilohertz match what is seen locally 
that's kind of quite advanced stuff. I don't recommend doing that generally because um, you've got to remember to do it every time you you um, you do the uh, the train detection process. These dots are showing you where the loudest cycle is. So if I scale that up a bit, you can see that this is cycle three. Um, and if we um, if we choose to display the not the click rate but the wave number of the peak, that's the the number of the cycle. Um, the mode here is at three. The number of the loudest cycle in the click. Um, okay, we'll, we'll look for another screen um, with a large number, um, and we'll do that again. So that modal value is at three, and we can do it uh, for the whole file if we. Um, let me redraw the file. Um, it, well, maybe we won't do the whole file just for sake of speed. Um, okay, we're going to be we're looking at the first thirty-five days of this file. Um, we're looking at porpoises only. And on the display page, we can choose what to graph. OK, so we will graph um, that substantial chunk of data. It's probably going to have more than a million porpoise clicks in it. Um, OK, it's doing the, uh, the FP1, the, the raw data there. Um, Okay, and now we're looking at the porpoises, which there are 6.4 million. So these these uh, porpoises, that um, loudest cycle is quite near the beginning of the click there. Um, what I'll do, just to exploit, we'll omit the CP1 and we'll get the number of cycles. Um, Okay, well that's showing us the same thing again. Just graph that. And that's the distribution of number of cycles. So actually with these large data sets, you do see that there are very distinct and significant differences between different populations. So Black Sea porpoises are acoustically quite different from Atlantic porpoises. Um, just a couple of other things to, to look at here. We can display the narrow band high frequency index. Um, so if we do uh, show from start again, um, it displays with this set of colors here. So purple is having a high narrowband high frequency index. This is a kind of rather arbitrary index constructed of a lot of different things about the click um, train about each sorry about each click. Um, and it tells you how far it resembles a typical porpoise click, a sort of canonical porpoise click. And the scale goes up to 15. So these are very typical of um, of porpoise clicks, but that is based on a kind of definition of of porpoise clicks that isn't actually true of the population everywhere. So if you have things that really look like they've got to be porpoises, or you even know there isn't anything except porpoises, and this is low, what it's telling you is they are acoustically distinct from uh, um, Focina Focina in the Atlantic. Um, and one other thing we might look at is the waveform and spectrum. So um, we'll remove that filter we set there. Um, show next screen. Um, 
there you go and I'll bring that down where you can see it you have to view next waveform so this is um this is the the click that that the the pod recorded there and you you can see that these are kind of very typical of the the waveforms of um porpoises and um yeah and you you can sort of well, in that last one you you could see that they were clipped again here they are they are clipped it's been it's been rounded off because we've sort of fitted sine waves to the wavelength um there is a an interesting feature here this um this line tells you the frequency based on each wavelength and there's often this lengthening after the uh, loudest part of the click so the click has actually got a sort of frequency down sweep going on there um this is very sort of fine you can you can see it again here that dip going on and again and again so it typically is after the loudest cycle um this down sweep is what you see in the the uh, Vigna plot in PAMGARD, but it shows actually much more strongly when you look at wavelengths when they're captured to this level of accuracy or precision, I should say. And the precision is, yeah, we're not seeing it in those clicks. We are seeing it there, etc. The um. The precision comes about because of the very high sampling rate, which is a million samples a second in the FPOD, and then it's upsampled to four million, and we can determine the the actual position of the wave peak very accurately from that. Um, and the Kogia NBHF clicks do not show this down sweep, so. Uh, that's a kind of subtle detail and it's an interesting discussion as to why they might have a down sweep okay we've covered a lot of stuff there <laughs> i hope i hope it was useful okay thanks for your attention